So the next talk is by Jinan Yao about uh, mostly automated verification of liveness properties for distributed protocols with ranking functions. So, hi everyone, I'm Jinan Yao, and today I'm happy to talk about our work on verifying liveness properties for distributed protocols. And work is now in collaboration with Jun Zhou Tao, Run Hui Gu, and Jason Ni, all from Columbia University. First, why do we wish to verify these reports? Because they are hard to design and implement correctly, where the key challenge is the non-determinism and the synchrony of such systems. And formal verification can be used to guarantee correctness of distributed protocols. Here we will use the ticket lock as a running example. Consider the scenario where a collection of clients try to access a shared resource on a server protected by a ticket lock. So each client at any time is either idle, waiting for the clock, waiting for the lock, or has entered a critical section. And the server maintains two entry variables, a serving, the current serving ticket, and the next ticket to be assigned. So a client can get a ticket, or it gets the next ticket, and increments the next ticket counter, and the other client can do the same. And then for the client that holds the serving ticket, it can enter the critical section and it can execute while holding the lock. And after finishing execution, it can leave the critical section, return the lock, and increment the serving ticket so it can serve the next client. For such a protocol, we need to ensure the safety property, which we already say bad things cannot happen. And for ticket law, the safety property would say that for any two clients, C1 and C2, if they both enter a critical section, then they must be the same client. In other words, they guarantee, this guarantees the mutual exclusion. On the other hand, we also need to ensure the language property that you already say good things must eventually happen. And for ticket lock, we need to ensure that for any client that is waiting for the lock, eventually it will enter the critical section rather than waiting forever. So here we need to prove both the safety property and the lineless property of a distributed protocol. In recent years, there, there has been significant progress on automatically verifying safety properties for distributed protocols. And here I list some existing tools to do that. But on the other hand, on automatically verifying liveness, there's nothing. And even if we count work that do this liveness proof mostly manually, there are relatively limited work on that, and it has its own limitation. It doesn't mean the problem is not important on papers on top PL and system conferences. We can also find these caveat statements that say we leave liveness for future work or liveness out of scope. Well, because Verifying liveness is generally much more harder, much harder than verifying safety. So, verifying liveness, the, determining liveness is undecidable in general. Otherwise, we have a solution to the haunting problem. And in practice, when we reason about safety, usually it suffices to reason about two consecutive states. Suppose the safety property holds on initial protocol states. Then we, need to sh then we only need to show that starting from any state that satisfies the safety property and take any valid transition, the new state still satisfies the safety property. And the challenge here is just to find inductive invariance to complete this proof of induction. On the other hand, to verify liveness, we need to reason about possibly infinite sequences of states. So for the ticket lock example, at any state where the client C starts waiting for the lock, we need to show that there exists a future state where the client, where client C enters a critical section. Since protocol transitions are undeterministic, usually we don't know how far in the future that will be. And this means we need to do complicated reasoning temporal logic, which also calls frequent timeouts from SMT solvers. Our contribution is that we propose LVR, a new method that can verify language properties for distributed protocols mostly automatically. It does not require internal expertise to use for the developers. The system is first of its kind. 
our first contribution lies in our reduction from Leibniz to safety. So consider this Leibniz property for ticket lock. We show that it suffices to prove a set of simpler properties. So here, let an orange circle denote a protocol state where the plan C is waiting and has not entered, and a green node represents a state where the plan C is neither waiting nor entered. We need to rule out a situation where there's an infinite sequences of states where the client C keeps waiting without ever entering the critical section. We also need to rule out a situation where there's no possible transition to take when client C is still waiting, which in other words, the system deadlocks. And we need to rule out a third situation where the, node, where the client C, without ever entering the critical section, just stops waiting, you just give up. So to prove the Leibniz property, we just need to show these three scenarios do not exist. But why is this necessarily simpler? Well, this is simpler because the second and third properties immediately become safety properties. They only, they only involve two consecutive states. And by becoming safety properties, it means that we can use that previously shown large number of existing tools to prove them automatically. The first property still involves possibly infinite sequences of states by becomes a standard termination problem. And that means we can prove it by finding a decreasing a non-negative ranking function that maps a protocol state to an integer. More formally, let S prime be the protocol states where the good thing is yet to happen. We need to find a ranking function F that satisfies for any such state is a negative and any pair of for any pair of states where there's a value transition between them the ranking function must strictly decrease. So actually, this kind of reduction is not specific to ticket law. It holds for any Leibniz property in the form as, as long as some trigger event happens, eventually some good thing will happen. And we observe this, most practical distributed protocols can have their Leibniz properties expressed in this form. And we'll be able to do the reduction and prove of four safety properties instead of the Leibniz property. So here, the first two properties, the, rank, the properties about ranking functions correspond to the termination property shown earlier. The third one corresponds to no deadlock, and the last one corresponds to no give up. I would say that reducing Leibniz to safety is nothing new. But compared with earlier acyclicity-based methods, our reduction does not involve augmenting the protocol and reasoning about a much more complicated one. So now the question is, how do we get the ra that ranking function? Ranking functions have long been used to prove termination of loops and recursions. Yet conventional wisdom claims that ranking function synthesis is feasible, mostly for arithmetic programs, it is difficult for distributed protocols or more general first order transition systems. Our contribution is we propose a new method where we analyze integer variables, the upper and lower bounds of them, and how they change in each transition, which we call deltas, and then we reach a ranking function. Well, it also serves as a message to the community that practical distributed protocols are not necessarily the same as general transition systems. Practical distributed protocols have certain properties that make their ranking functions easier to synthesize than previously believed, and more work can be done in this area. Let's consider what variables can appear in the ranking function. So let's get back to the ticket lock example. Naturally, we may have an integer variable that counts the number of clients that are waiting for the lock. We will have a variable that counts the number of clients that have entered a critical section. And let's say, suppose the client has executed three steps while holding the lock, then we may have another variable that counts the number of executions while in the current critical section. So after finding these integer variables, we consider ranking function as a linear combination of these variables like this, where the weights are themselves polynomials over immutable integer variables. So this n-execute means the maximum number of executions a client can 
take while holding the critical sections before it is forced out. So in general, a ranking function can be of any form, but we observe that most practical distributed protocols can have the ranking functions naturally expressed in this linear polynomial form. Then the problem is just to find a valid assignment of the coefficients that satisfy the ranking function constraints. Let's take a closer look at the ranking function decreasing constraint. We can rewrite it as the new ranking function minus the initial ranking function is, is negative, which can be further expressed, since it's a linear combination of integer variables, it can be further expressed as the weighted combination of the deltas of the mutable integer variables is negative. And this means as long as we can identify constraints on those mutable integer variables, we can have ranking function synthesis as a coefficient solving problem. So consider the transition enter and ticket lock, where one node enters the critical section, so the number of clients that are still waiting will decrease by one, while the number of clients that have entered will increase by one. So to make the ranking function decrease, we'll generate this constraint on the weights. And remember that the weights are themselves polynomials over low-level coefficients, so we'll translate the constraint down to x1, x2, and so on. The paper has more details on how to do this. And eventually, we collect the constraints for all the transitions, and we can let an SMT solver find an assignment of these coefficients, which means well, and a valid assignment means a valid ranking function. And the last question is, how do we actually get these deltas? So we implement a lightweight static analyzer where we first analyze possible integer variables that can appear in the ranking function. Then we analyze the upper and lower bounds of each integer variable. And based on the bounds, we analyze how each variable can change after each transition. And we also analyze that in some, in some circumstances, a transition simply cannot happen, happen, which we call contradiction. Some limited user guidance may be needed in this process, including specifying additional variables, tightening statically inferred bounds or deltas, or telling additional contradictions. So for things we are showing here, the static analyzer fails to identify the upper bound of the number of clients that have entered a critical section. But this should be straightforward for any user because mutual exclusion of a log protocol directly means that we cannot have more than one client that enters the critical section at the same time. So we implement LVR with a protocol description language MyPyV and use PFRC3 as our off-the-shelf invariant inference tool to prove the reduced safety properties and use it to verify language properties of a distributed protocols including popular mutual exclusion, consensus, and network transmission protocols. And we can see that LVR can complete the proof in just a few hours for each protocol, which is a significant improvement over previous manual verification, which can usually take weeks or even longer. For TLB shootdown and sliding window, the off-the-shelf invariant inference tool failed to identify certain inductive invariants so the user has to step in and manually figure out these invariants, which take a few hours for each, but the runtime is still well manageable. And we also show the number of user guidance needed to complete the proof, including the, the additional variables specified, the bounds tightened, and the contradictions specified. Now we can see that they are quite small, especially when compared with the size of the protocol, which means the user guidance is also well manageable. So in conclusion, we present LVR, a noble method for verifying Leibniz properties of distributed protocols based on our new reduction from Leibniz to safety. And we reformulate ranking function synthesis as a coefficient solving problem. And we use static analysis to analyze integer variables, then the bounds, then their deltas. Our key contributions include LVR being the first mostly automated system for verifying Leibniz properties for distributed protocols it demonstrates its effectiveness on practical distributed protocols, and it requires no internal knowledge for the user to use it. That's all. Thank you for listening, and I'll be happy to take any questions.
How does the method scale with the large values of the variables like m exec in this case? Uh, where are they? Oh, what, uh, what, what is the question again? Sorry. Uh, if we you if the variables have a large set of possible values, how well does this method scale? Like the mxec value could be very high in some protocols that have like a large number of steps after taking the critical section. Yeah, actually, all the m here is just an abstract variable. It can be of any value. So we are using an abstract m, abstract maximum, instead of any real maximum, such as 1024. So we are proving for any arbitrary maximum, uh, exact ma maximum execute. But that does raise a good point. If there are a lot of such configurable parameters, then there might be a problem of scalability. But for our protocols, I think three or four such configurable parameters are fine. Thank and in you. fact, all, yeah, all queries to the SNT solver for solving coefficients finish with just within one second. Uh, thank you for the, for the nice work and the nice talk. Um, I guess, from what I understand, you synthesize these uh, coefficients before inferring any invariant. So what happens in cases where, for the termination or liveness argument, you need some invariants to establish that these constraints on this slide hold? Yeah, that's exactly why we reduce liveness to safety. And actually, in this, uh, Renting function synthesis, what I didn't say is that it will spawn a set of simpler safety properties. And for those safety properties, we'll use the existing invariant inference tools to try to prove them automatically. And when that fails, the user steps in. But this does significantly reduce the human effort to write those invariants. Thank you. And I guess one more small question. What happens if the system violates safety? Let's say I still have a bug in the system and it's not live. So actually, we, this did happen in our uh, experiments, not because the system is not live, but because the, I actually made mistakes when writing protocols, but I believe this do happen in real development. What happens is that the, system, the static analyzer will give bounds and deltas inconsistent with human intuition. So the user, when the user looks at them, I just realized there's something wrong, and after further examination, I actually realized actually it comes from, from a bug in the protocol. So there's no general guarantee that it's always happened, but I believe most of the time, the user can realize something's wrong during this process. All right, thank you. You can go ahead and set up.